I thought he's great. Yes. Yeah. I thought he's so great. He's so powerful. Yeah. He's so marvelous. Yeah. He's so great to us. So, so. so we need to be grateful. And we need to be thankful. Woo. And we need to give him all our praise, yes. all the glory which is to us. The first time we're going to sing is how great is our God.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. No time to waste. And uh, basically, we just go as the spirit leaders. We believe in praying. Yes. <laughs> I'm a praying man. Wonderful. I've always been since Wonderful. I gave my life to the Lord. Wonderful. And as a matter of fact, I had to open my mouth and pray a sinner's prayer as Jesus in my heart. Yes. So my salvation began with prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The sinner's prayer. Oh, glory to God. And then you've got to progress in prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. So I believe in praying. Yes. I pray all the time. Wonderful. And I don't believe in like little 10 minutes prayer. No. Why, why not pray for 20 minutes and pray till you get a breakthrough? Yes. Come to church and pray and you get a breakthrough. Then you know you're ready to move on yes. to a higher level now yes. of praise and worship, giving God praise, giving glory. That's how we do it. We come, we pray until we know that there's a breakthrough. Yes. And you feel it in your spirit. Yes. Now it's time to delight yourself in the Lord and praise him and worship him and give him thanks. Yes. And then you break the bread. If somebody has a testimony, somebody come and testify what God has done Thank to you, help Jesus. build up the body of Christ, to build up the saints and flowing in that same spirit. You can't have this joy tidness going on. You know, miss, miss, it and miss, it and miss, and this jointedness. It has to flow like a beautiful stream. The Holy Spirit is a wonderful stream, isn't it? River of life. Flowing up clean water. Water of life. And that's how it's ought to be. Oh, glory to God. So we give God the glory. Amen. So I'm going to be ministering. And uh, I think it's going to be brief. Sometimes I can preach long. Sometimes I can preach short. Mm -hmm. But I think tonight is going to be short. Get right to the point. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And uh, let the Holy Spirit have his way. We don't know how it's going to end. But it's going to end good. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> it's going to end good. I thank all of you for coming tonight yes. and thank you all for praying for us. Yes. We can't do it without you. We need one another. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's what I've been looking at tonight. We need one another. Yes. Hallelujah. So if you get your Bibles. Hallelujah. And you can turn to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Yes. Verse 6. And uh, the message tonight is entitled, The Power of Timely Introduction. The Power of Timely Introduction. What is intro introduction? Introduction is to make known, to present, to announce. It is to present someone by name to another in all order to establish an acquaintance. It is also to bring forward a plan, for example, for consideration or for action, an introduction. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 6, God introduces himself to a man by the name of Moses in a burning bush. God in, made his entry to a servant Moses as he was shepherding his father-in-law's sheep in the desert and God announced himself in a burning bush. Moses saw the bush burning. He might have seen other bush burning, bush fire, you know, because of the heat of the desert. But this bush that he saw, there was a difference. It was burning, but not burned up. Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses turned aside to look and see that, that great sight. But did I see right? I seen this bush on fire, but the bush is not burning. Uh, can you see a bush out there? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine it's on fire and it's just intact? Mm -hmm. No fire in it. Like Shadrach, Nishak, and Abednego in the fire mm -hmm. <laughs> and not burning. Hey. Oh, glory to God. And he heard a voice. The voice of God spoke to him from the bush. And God introduced himself to Moses. By way of what? Revelation. Hallelujah. And God introduced himself as, I am the God of thy father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. 
Moses, you got a history. You may not be well acquainted with your history because you were reared as an Egyptian for 40 years. You were brought up as an Egyptian in Pharaoh's palace by Pharaoh's daughter. And you dressed like an Egyptian. You walked like an Egyptian. You talked like an Egyptian. But Moses, something was instilled in you by your mother who looked after you. Hallelujah. As your maid in Pharaoh's palace for a certain period of time, she instilled something in you from a child. Like Timothy was taught by his mother and grandmother from a child. So when Moses now became 40 years old, he knew that these were his people. But he had no connection with his people. And we know how he tried to be the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He killed an Egyptian yeah. to protect his brother, Israelite, who was abused by an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Then the following day that he went out, he saw an, uh, two Israelites fighting. And he said to the aggressor, the one who started the fight, why are you fighting your brother? You are brothers. And he said to Moses, who has made you prince or uh, leader and judge over us? Yes, yes. You want to do to me like what you did to the Egyptian yes, yesterday? You think yes, I didn't see you? I you killed that Egyptian and buried him. You think yes. I didn't see you? Mm -hmm. And Moses became afraid, the Bible said. And Moses fled for his life. Yes. And we know he was 40 years old at the time. And 40 years now he spent in the wilderness now Moses is 80 years old and God chooses to introduce himself to Moses at the age of 80. it's not too late for you no. hallelujah oh glory to God yeah. timely introduction mm. that was a timely introduction you see God will introduce himself to us <laughs> when he is about to do something specific in our lives. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He just don't turn up anyhow and, and any time mm -hmm. he pleases. He has to be divinely orchestrated, mm -hmm. divinely planned. Yeah. Like I said earlier early on, to, to bring forward a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, for consideration or for action. Now it was time for God to act and be of his people, to set his people free. He said, I've heard the cries of my people. Yeah. They've been in captivity yeah. a long time, but it looked like they were crying. Yeah. Looked like they were crying hard enough yeah. to get his attention. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. So he heard their cry. Yeah. And he said, I've seen where the Egyptians have oppressed them, yeah. and I am come down to deliver them, yeah. but I want a man to go. I'm not going to do it all by myself. No. Hallelujah. No. I want a trusted person on earth that I can raise up to go and set my captives free. Yes. Yes. God is looking for a man. God is looking for a woman. Yes. He's looking for a boy. He's looking for a girl that he can raise up at this appointed time yes. to set his people free. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Say the yes. praise the Lord. Yes. So God introduced himself to Moses as uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Further on, God introduced himself as I am that I am. Yes. Exodus 4 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Moses said to God, all right God, after God basically gave him a series of signs mm -hmm. and convincing that he was with him, mm -hmm. when God told him to throw the rod down yeah. and the rod became a serpent, a serpent. Yeah. hallelujah yes. and Moses ran away he was afraid yeah. would you run away if you throw your rod down your stick and it turned into this big aggressive serpent wouldn't you run oh, yes. wouldn't you run oh, yes. so Moses ran but God said rub it by the tail he picked it up by, by the tail yeah. and it turned into a rod again in his hand God said put your hand in your bosom he put his hand in his bosom and when he took it out it was white with leprosy mm -hmm. And then God said, put it back in. He put it back in and it came as the other flesh, normal. Yes, God. And God said, uh, and you will also pour water on the ground and it will turn into blood. Mm -hmm. And then Moses said, God, send somebody else. Please, God, I'm not eloquent. I can't speak. I stutter. Send someone else. And God got angry. God got angry because Moses said, send somebody else. 
You don't tell the commander send somebody else. Yeah. You don't tell the king send somebody else. Yeah. When he has and pick you, right. and he knows everything, yeah. and he prepared you yeah. in the wilderness for forty years. Yeah. Obviously, Moses had given up all dream of ever being the deliverer, mm -hmm. wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Forty years, yes. forty years in the desert. Mm -hmm. Would you? Would you still hold on to that dream and that vision yeah. when you're settled down now? You're a married man. You have your wife, <laughs> you have two kids, <laughs> and you have a, a career, and that is the worst career to the Egyptian, because shepherding is the worst kind of job to the Egyptian, but God humbled Moses, he humbled him, gave him the worst kind of job, that, that is to an Egyptian, he humbled him. God will give us a worst kind of job that we say we won't want to do. God give it to you. Yes. And see how you get on with that job. Right. And then he'll promote you. He'll give you the worst job in the church. Yes. Oh, he'll give the worst kind of people to deal with. Yes. Yeah. And see how you handle it. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, yes. God. And when you know how to look after shepherd, God says you can be shepherd of my people. Exactly. Hallelujah. When you know how to clean up the field of the sheep. Yes. Hallelujah. God will say you know how to put up and tolerate yes. with the filthiness of my people. Mm. Hallelujah. God. Oh, glory to God. So Moses was in training for 40 years. Wow, that was a long time. No wonder the Bible says Moses was the meekest man, would you? After God finished with you, get through with you. And beat out everything out of you. All the pride out of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wouldn't you? Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah, beat it out. <laughs> yes, in that desert, he beat it out. Oh, glory to God. And Moses then became the meekest man on earth. But yet he had a good temper still. Because yes. we see later on yes. that he was disqualified from going in the promised land. Mm. Because when God said, strike the rock, speak to the rock, he hit it because the people got on his nerve and he got angry. Yes. But God was merciful to him. Oh. He showed up in the promised land yes. to encourage Jesus with yes. Elijah yes. on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yes. Even though he didn't go in there naturally yes. after he died. We see him turn up there yes. in Israel. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Some blessings are ahead of us, you know, yes. that we will not get on this side of life. Yes. But God has it reserved for us. Oh, glory. You have some blessings, some truckloads of blessings to yes, pick up man. on the other side. Oh, yes. But we also have some oh, blessings glory. here. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, blessing. Hallelujah. So, Moses said to God, send someone else. Anyway, God said to him, God said to him, if you look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 27 to 30. Exodus 4, 27 to 30. God introduces Aaron to his brother Moses. Yes. Now, this is 80 years. 80 years Moses is. Aaron is 83 years old. He's three years older than Moses. Moses and Aaron didn't grow up together. No. Although they were in Egypt, Moses grew up in the palace as Prince Moses. Aaron grew up among the Israelites. So they didn't have any contact. And now, 80 years later, God is saying, your brother is coming to meet you in the desert. Wow. What a family reunion. Mm -hmm. Your brother that he has not even seen. Mm -hmm. Moses left the house when he was three months old. Mm -hmm. My love. Maybe he saw Aaron when his mother looked after, mm -hmm. after him in the palace. Sometimes she would bring Aaron. Yes, yes. But he could not maybe rec uh, recollect so much mm -hmm. about his brother Aaron. Mm -hmm. wow. And God is saying to Moses, Let's read it. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go. Say go. Somebody say go. 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 When God say go, go. go. Because he's the navigator. Yes. You might say, we're God. I don't know where I'm going. But God says, I am the na navigator. I am your sat nav. I'll talk to you. And you keep on straight. When you need a turn, I'll talk again. Yes. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. You get in your sat nav. You, 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 have you seen the sat nav you're driving? Think. It, is this thing got off? Because it's not talking. Because it's going for miles on the street. But it's when you're ready to turn off, it talk again. That's all right. It's still with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So some of you might be saying, God is not talking to me. God says, you're on the street. You're going straight. There's no need for me to talk, tell you to, to talk to you right now because there's no need to turn off. Just keep going. Keep going. If God not talking to you, keep going straight. Keep going straight until he talk again. Hallelujah. So God said, Go into what the wilderness yes. to meet Moses. Mm -hmm. wow. You see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Yes. And what did he do? He obeyed. Yes. He went yes. and met him in what? The 
the Mount of God, Mount Oreb, Mount Sinai, where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Yes. Aaron went into that desert wow. to meet his brother. Would you believe that? Yeah. And all, yes, and Moses told, I need to back up, yeah. and he went and met him in the Mount of God and kissed him. They embraced one another yes, and yes. kissed his brother, yes, yes. his long lost brother, his little baby brother. Yes. And Moses told Aaron all the words, <laughs> all the words of the Lord who had sent him because God told Moses what to do. So now Moses is informing Aaron what God told him yes. about going down into Egypt mm. to set the, his people free. And all the signs which he had commanded him. <laughs> and Moses and Aaron went and gathered, now they're in the land of Israel, mm -hmm. and gathered all the elders of the children of Israel. They went first to the leaders and told the leaders mm. what God has said. Yes. But Aaron here is a spokesman. Mm. Because Aaron is more fluent in Hebrew than Moses. Uh -huh. Moses is more influent, uh, fluent in the Egyptian language. Yes. The Bible says Moses was a man powerful in word, yes. powerful in speech. Yes. So when Moses said, I can't speak, I'm not so eloquent, and I stutter, he was talking about the Hebrew language. Mm -hmm. So God sent the one who can speak it fluently, Aaron. Yes. And who's more accustomed to the yes. Hebrew people. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So God introduced Aaron to his brother Moses. And now Aaron is introducing Moses to the Israelites. Oh, glory. Hallelujah! <laughs> glory to God. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had commanded unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. So before they did any sign in the presence of Pharaoh, they did it in the presence of the Israelites to convince them that God is real. Hallelujah. They pour water down and they turn into blood and they did various signs to convince God's people. Yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to see some sign. Yes. Hallelujah. Just to remind us that our God is real. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. So we are looking at the power of timely introduction. Wow. Hallelujah. We need to be introduced, you know. Yes. God put people strategically in place to introduce people. Yes. Anybody that amounts to anything, there's somebody who helped them. Amen. Somebody introduced them to somebody. Yes. But it seems like the introducers are sitting down and very content and don't want to introduce yes. others. Yes. If Moses needed to be introduced to his brother and to be introduced to the Israelite, don't you think that we need to be introduced as well? Yes. Hallelujah. I know there are people who will introduce, and I've heard it, Especially when like, the Caribbean folks came over here, mm -hmm. you know, young Caribbean folks in their um, 20s and um, teens, sometimes they, they would have a setup. They would invite somebody. They would maybe invite a friend, a woman friend, and they invite the man friend, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of get them together, hooked up. Get them hooked up together. Introduce. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Introduce. Have yeah. any of you been introduced in a relationship? Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Introduce. Yes. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you give an hint. Yeah, mommy might give a little hint. What do you think about him? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get you thinking, you know? Yeah. Get you looking. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Introduction. Introduction. Mm. And we go now to the New Testament. John chapter 1 verse 29. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Yes. What a man. What a prophet. What a servant of God. One who was filled from birth with the Holy Ghost. In his mother's womb. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. This man. That was a powerful prophet. He was the last of the Old Testament prophet. And he bridged the gap right into the New Testament. Mm. He was the forerunner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was the voice crying out in the wilderness, yeah. preparing the way of the Lord, preparing yeah. the way to introduce yeah. the people to Jesus. Mm. 
Jesus had to be introduced. Amen. The Son of God had to be introduced by a man. Yes. So we need to be introduced. Yes. We need to be introduced. Yes. Father, we pray yes. that the introducers, yes. hallelujah, will start to do their work yes. and start to introduce to promote your kingdom, yes. to promote your body, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. T.D. <coughs> Jakes said, he's been around for a long time preaching. Mm -hmm. Nobody heard of T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. He used to pastor a congregation of about seven people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was four. And that went on for a while. And uh, this guy called, called Carlton uh, Pearson, he was prominent, well, prominent at one time. So he had also a television show. And he would um, put on seminars and conferences and uh, introduce preachers. T.D. Jakes was introduced to one of his conferences. And uh, they filmed just a little clip of T.D. Jakes um, preaching, maybe just about two minutes or so. And uh, somehow the, the president of T.B. Hen, what's his name? You know, his wife is called John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, T.B. Hen. Mm -hmm. He saw this clip mm -hmm. of T.D. Jakes preaching and that introduced him to T.D. Um, T. Jakes. And T.D. Jakes has not looked back since. Paul Crouch. Yeah, Paul Crouch. Yeah, Paul Crouch, yeah. Mm -hmm. Has not looked back since. Why? Because somebody introduced him. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus. So we look at um, John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. He said that to all those who he were baptizing. Behold the Lamb of God. He pointed out Jesus to the congregation. He introduced Jesus to the congregation. He was talking about him before, that there's one who come after me, I am not worthy yes. to unloose the lashes of his sandals. I'm not worthy. And when Jesus turned up that day, he said, this is the man that I've been telling you about. Yes. Divine what? Introduction. And uh, later on, John saw Jesus again the next day. The next day, and he pointed Jesus out again, confirming it. And it says two of John's disciples heard it. And these two disciples of John, one of them turned out to be Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And from then he became Jesus' disciple, because John pointed out. Hallelujah, Jesus. He introduced Jesus. Andrew introduced, and then Andrew introduces his brother Peter to Jesus. Hallelujah. That is found in John chapter 1. We're still in John chapter 1, 40 to 42. John chapter 1, 40 to 42. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him, which is Jesus, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first finds his own brother Simon, and says unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And what did he do? He brought him. We said, say brought. brought. He brought. Say brought. brought. He brought him to Jesus. So he introduced his brother to Jesus. Yes. Isn't that what Jesus has said we must do? Yes. Be witnesses of him. Yes. Yes. We must bring people to Jesus. Yes. Introduce Someone. Hallelujah! Yeah, Introduce yeah, Jesus to people yeah. and people to Jesus. Yeah. That's our job. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. That's our commission. Amen. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 And finally, we're going to be looking at. Well, it's not quite finally. It's almost finally. It was going to be final. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Saul of Tarsus, yes. who became the Apostle Paul. Yes. He was on his way to Jerusalem, and we know he was rather to Damascus in Syria from Jerusalem to arrest God's people 
That's right. In a foreign country. Mm -hmm. My Lord. This man was so zealous mm -hmm. that he was willing to go into a foreign country. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right into Syria. Mm -hmm. My word, the cheek of the man. To arrest God's children and bring them all the way back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he took delight in that because he was one who was supervising the death of Stephen. Yeah. So when Stephen was now martyred for the faith, he was stoned. It's, it looked like he went into, uh, into <coughs> overdrive basically mm. with a passion to arrest every Christian and wipe them out. That was his mission. Mm. But he was met by the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. on his way to, uh, to Damascus. Yeah. As he almost reached Damascus, the Lord shone his marvelous light and knocked him down off his horse and humbled him and blinded him yes. and caused him to see him. Yes. He blinded his natural eyes yes. and opened his spiritual eyes. He blinded his natural eyes and opened his spiritual eyes. He blinded his natural eyes and opened his spiritual eyes. Oh, glory to God. Blinded his natural eyes and opened his spiritual eyes. And then he heard the master calling. Yes, praise the Lord. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Yes. And he says, Who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus. Introduction. Yes. Jesus introduced himself oh my yes. to the Apostle Paul. He introduced himself, divine introduction. Yes. Jesus has introduced himself to you. Oh, yes. You could never accept Jesus if he did not introduce himself to you. Yes. You may not be aware of it, but he did. Because yes. he said, no one can come to me except be drawn by the Spirit. Yes. So the Holy Spirit introduces you to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus introduces you to the Father. Yes. Hallelujah. You see how it works? Yes. Hallelujah. We got to stop being so selfish mm -hmm. and start, you know, don't think so much about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You find something good, say, come on, we can share it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord, you can share the Lord. Yes. You can't eat all of the Lord, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> and all this bread and all this food, this living word, share you can't it. eat all of it. Yes. Share it. Share it. That's right. share it. That's right. There's more room for everybody. Yes. Enough room for everybody. Yes. Share it. Yes. So the Lord Jesus introduced himself to, to the Apostle Paul. At the time he was not an apostle, he was a notorious <laughs> murderer of the church. Yes. He was a terrorist. Yes. He was a terrorist. He was a terror to the church. Yes. The Bible says he was breathing out, um, threatening murder mm -hmm. against the church. Mm -hmm. He wanted to wipe the church out. Yes. He had a vengeance. Mm -hmm. He had a uh, yes. hatred against the church because he yes. thought he was doing the right thing. Yes. He was so religious yes. and religious people are the most dangerous people in the world. Yes. Yes. Don't you see what's going on in the world today yes. with the Islamic people? Yes. They are so religious, yes. Yes. so devoted to their religion. Yes. And if you don't think like them, if you don't believe like what they believe, they're ready to wipe you out yes. because they think that they're doing the right thing. Yes. The scribes and the Pharisees, that's what they did to Jesus, isn't it? Yes. Because they were so right. Religion is very dangerous. Yes. Cain was religious and he killed his brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. God deliver us from religion. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And give us rela relationship. Yes. True relationship with you yes. and true relationship with one another. Yes. Religion is killing the church. Yes. Yes. True, yes. And everybody can formulate their own religion. Because mm -hmm. anything that you believe that can become your religion. Yes. And in one church you have so much religious groups. Yes. Yes. They had it in the church in Corinth. Yes. Paul had to address it. Right. Right. Yet they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. But they were not in subjection to the Holy Spirit. Yes. They were carnal. <laughs> and carnal means you're worldly. Your thinking is worldly. Yes. You're still operating in the old Adamic nature. Oh, yes. You're not operating according to the new man, according to the new birth. Him, Carnality. The carnal mind cannot please God. Oh, it's God. in enmity against God. Yes. It cannot even though it tries. Carnality cannot please God. The spirit and carnality is in war. The Holy Spirit is carnality. And carnality is the spirit. And only one winner in the hand. And that's the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm. 
Hallelujah. Don't get in no carnal war with anybody. No. Walk away. Yes. Hold your peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Blessed are the peacemakers, yes. for they shall be called the children of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't fight nobody in the flesh. No. Oh, glory to God. Walk away. Yes. If they want your jacket, yes. give it to them. Yes. Let them take it. Yes. If they want your frock, give it to them. Yes. Let them take it. You may have your skirt on. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God will cover you up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God is going to have a church. He must do an entire church. <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Moses was forgotten about, but God did not forget him. No. Moses was a stranger in the palace, and he found himself in Midian, a stranger. Sometimes you feel like a stranger. Even among the people of God, you feel like a stranger because you don't fit in. Why don't you fit in? Because God has a mold for you. God has a place for you, and you cannot fit in any and anywhere. No, no way. Hallelujah. And you can't eat any and anything. No. What other people eat, you can't eat. He yeah. give you belly ache. Yeah. You will vomit it out. Yeah. Oh, shut up about one day. Some people can eat that. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. What is meant to be warm, they can eat it cold. Oh, but yes. you can't eat that cold food. Oh, you must have it at the right warm temperature. Yes. Yes. Some people can drink cold tea. Yes. Some people can't. They have to have the tea warm. Yes. Right. But some people, they can eat anything. Yes. anything. Pig can eat anything. Yes. Hog can eat anything. Shut up, Ako Shikende. Shut up. But we are not hogs. We are not pigs. No. 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 We are sheep. No. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. No. Oh, yes. and our diet must be right. Yes. Oh, our menu must be right. Yes. Oh, glory to yes. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, give him glory. Give him glory. Yes. Oh, the glory. Give him glory. Oh, give the Lord the glory. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten you. And every one of you who decide to come out tonight, you had an appointment with God and you didn't know it. Hallelujah. God wanted you to hear this word tonight. God wanted to receive your praise tonight. God wanted to re receive your prayers tonight. God wanted to do something unique in your life tonight. Hallelujah. To bring about a change. Hallelujah. Because God has a timely appointment for you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And finally, Thank you, Lord. this same Apostle Paul, yes. because of his notorious past, mm -hmm. some of us, we may have had a notorious past. Mm -hmm. A past that we have already passed. Mm -hmm. But others can't go past mm -hmm. that past. That's right. They still see us in the past. Yes. Yes. But you are now in the future. Amen. But they still see your history. Mm -hmm. And they bring that past up. Yes, and they can never forget it. Mm -hmm. Saul had a past. Mm -hmm. And rightfully, the disciples were afraid of this man. Yes. Because he was killing them off. Yes. 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 Oh, glory to God. Amen. And now they heard that this man is a convert mm -hmm. to Christianity. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe it. I think this man may be coming to spy our freedom. Yes. So you have easy access yes. to come into our homes yes. <laughs> and arrest yes. us yes. and kill us. No. They didn't believe. No. So sometimes our past can cause people mm -hmm. not to be free with us mm -hmm. and freely accept us. Yes. But there has to be someone who can stand up and say, this man has repented of his sins. Yes. God has yes. forgiven him. Yes. He is truly saved. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes, <laughs> amen, amen. Somebody must know you're saved. Mm -hmm. If nobody knows you're saved, then you have to question yourself, am I saved? Amen. Somebody should know that you're saved. Amen. Not only God and you, but somebody should know you're saved. Yes. There should be some light shining. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There should be some light. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So Barnabas is introduces Paul to the apostles to the leaders of the church. Mm -hmm. Barnabas introduces Paul to the leaders of the church. Let's read it. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 9, verse 26 to 29. Acts chapter 9, 26 to 29. Mm -hmm. 
and when Saul was come to Jerusalem. You see, he got saved on his way to Damascus in Syria. When he got there, he was blinded because he was led. He was led. He couldn't make his own way there because he was blinded. The Lord blinded him, yes. physically blinded him. Yes. And for three days, he was blind. That's right. And God sent one of his servants, Ananias, to lay on, on him mm -hmm. and heal him. And he received his sight and received the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, yes. and was baptized. And straight away, he started to preach about the Lord Jesus yes. in Damascus, yes. in Syria. He started to preach in all the Jewish synagogues there. You remember he went to arrest the Christians there. So now when he started to preach now to the Jews who were not converted to Christianity, then they start to say, what's wrong with this man? Maybe they thought he was a joker. At first when he's in the synagogue preaching, they didn't take him serious. But when they realize this man is serious, when he start to preach about Jesus, and Jesus is the Christ, and he's the son of God, they, they thought, what's wrong with Saul? He came here to arrest these people and now he's behaving like them. He's talking like them. Is he really one of them? And when they were convinced that he was really one of them, they tried to kill him. <laughs> and he had to escape in a basket down the wall, the city wall, for his life. So he had not been to Jerusalem for years. He's not, he hasn't been to Jerusalem. But now he decided to go up to Jerusalem and to show himself to the disciples of Jesus Christ yes. in Jerusalem. You remember persecution was going on at that time because yes. he was one of the terrorists persecuting yes. the body of Christ. Right. Right. So now, and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he assayed, the word assayed mean tried, he tried to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him. <laughs> See that? All afraid of him. You come to church. And nobody, everybody running away from you. No, nobody want nothing to do with you. <laughs> all the disciples, all the Christians, all the congregation were afraid of this man yes. because they knew yeah, of his past, yes. but they, they, they did not know that he had changed. Mm -hmm. So they were all afraid of him, mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Ghost, but <laughs> they were all afraid of him because they know this man was a murderer. Yes. He was a killer. He was a Christian killer. Mm -hmm. So they were all afraid of him. <laughs> Can you imagine a terrorist coming here? You know, this man, had a uh, a not he's very notorious. You don't know whether he's changed. Mm -hmm. And he's coming. And he hates Christians. And you know he's got a reputation. You see his picture all over the place, all over the television, everywhere. And he is a real terrorist that hates Christians. He hates Jews. He hates anything to do with God. Anything to do with Jesus. And this man comes in. You, you know, he comes in among you. You have to watch him carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were watching Saul carefully. Mm -hmm. They were all afraid of him. Mm -hmm. All afraid of him. All afraid of him. Has anybody come in your church and you're afraid of? They're not terrorists. <laughs> not <afraid. laughs> but, you, but, but you're just afraid. Yeah. You're just afraid. <laughs> you're just afraid. <laughs> you would have to wait to make sure that they change first. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. You gotta watch it yeah. one eye and the other. Yeah, so they were all afraid of him. And believe not that he was a disciple. He was a disciple of Jesus, but they didn't believe him. But can we say but? But, but Barnabas. Barnabas is their means son of encouragement. As a matter of fact, his real name is Joseph. Joseph. He is a Levite, a Jew, from Cyprus, born in Cyprus. But he spent time in Jerusalem. And the disciples are the apostles calling Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was a real encourager. Hallelujah. But Barnabas took him Barnabas took him and what? Brought. We see how Andrew brought his brother Simon Peter to Jesus. Now we see here Barnabas is bringing Paul to the apostles. Yes. Barnabas brought, <laughs> brought him to the apostles. You see the church was afraid of him. The disciples were afraid of him. But he brought him to the leaders of the church. And if the leaders accept him, then everybody else will. Yes. If they approve of him, then everybody else will. Yeah. 
So he, he brought him to the authority of the church. And declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. So this is the testimony of Barnabas regarding Saul. In other words, he's saying, do not be afraid of this man. You know, I have credibility in him. He's credible. He's a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus met him on the way. He's given his testimony and I have no reason to disbelieve him. And declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him. So he said, Paul saw Jesus, struck him down in his marvelous life, and Jesus spoke to him. And he goes on to say, and how he, how he, Paul, had uh, preached boldly in Damascus in the name of the Lord. And he was with them. Now he was with them. The apostle accepted the testimony of Barnabas regarding Paul. And now he was free now to fellowship with them. So the Bible says he was with them coming in and going out. <laughs> coming in and going out freely. Coming in and going out among the brethren in, 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 at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord at Jerusalem and disputed against the Grecian, the Grecian-speaking Jews. Mm -hmm. But they were, but they went about to slay, slay him, to kill him. Yeah. Now again, they're ready to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> but we see the introduction, God introduced himself to Moses. Yeah. I am the God of your father, yeah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. And Moses said, who shall I say that you are her? when I go down into Egypt mm -hmm. to your people and they ask me who has sent me God said tell them I am that I am I am that I am that's all you need to know about me Moses I am that I am anything you want me to be that's what I am hallelujah I am I'm your healer I am your deliverer I am your savior hallelujah I am your friend I am your king I am your father I am your everything Moses I am your provider I am I, your, I am your Jehovah Jireh I am your El Shaddai or your mighty breasted one I am your strength I am I am I am I am I am that I am hallelujah what a divine introduction God introduced himself to Moses and God introduced uh, Moses to his brother Aaron and sent them down into Egypt. So Moses was not alone. When you read the Bible, the Bible tells you about Aaron and Moses, Aaron uh, working miracles, Aaron sometimes using the rod and stretching the rod and working miracles. Not only Moses was using that rod, Aaron was also using the rod. Hallelujah! And also, hallelujah, speaking to the people. Oh, glory to God. And later on, he became priest. The first high priest of Israel, Aaron. Oh, glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. And we see, hallelujah. John the Baptist, hallelujah. The voice crying out in the wilderness, hallelujah, preparing the way of the Lord. Introduce Jesus to the people. He said, I must decrease and Jesus must increase. My time is coming to an end. And it's the time of Jesus. It's time for me to move out. And let Jesus move in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Move out and let Jesus move in. Yeah. Whatever need to move out of your life, yeah. let it move out and let Jesus move in. Let it move out and let Jesus move in. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus yeah. cannot share room with yeah. any yeah. other stranger. Yeah. Hallelujah. With any strange gods. Yes. Move out. Yes. Hallelujah. Let Jesus move in. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Because he wants to live inside of you. Yes. So John introduced Jesus mm -hmm. to the congregation that he was baptizing and he also introduced Jesus mm -hmm. to some of his disciples mm -hmm. and one of them turned out to be Andrew, <coughs> Simon's Peter's brother and the first thing he did was introduce Jesus to his own brother mm -hmm. Peter. Let's introduce Jesus to our family. Yes. to our children, yes. to our brothers, yes. to our, uh, your parents, right. to our relatives. Yes. Introduce Jesus That's to them. Right. They may not want Jesus, but introduce yes. Jesus yes. to them. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it not be said that we have not introduced Jesus to them. Jesus. 
and then it's up to them and Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Where they go from there. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Yes, yes, Lord. If Jesus needed introduction, we certainly need it. Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever introduced you, Martin, to anybody that helps you to play your drum better yes. and give you opportunity? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Your brother Mark, he plays so well, but somebody's introduced him, yeah, isn't it? That's yeah. right. All right. That's right. I know he plays all over the place. Yeah. Because he's got a talent, yeah. but somebody recognized it and yeah. somebody introduced him. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Barnabas introduced Paul to the apostles. And literally brought him to, to the apostles. Well, so this message is very clear, isn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. Did you get anything from this message? No. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we're going to pray. Father, we want to thank you.